Hey, Dr. John here. Um, I'm assuming that you saw part one of this video series in which I gave compelling reasons for why a person in the medical field or in the science field should learn this mnemonic that I'm going to present to you in this video on the hypothalamic pituitary region where sensory central meets the master gland. Now the mnemonic is going to be for hypothalamic hormones and their modulating effects on the pituitary hormones. And I already did a brief review in the first video on the axis and feedback loops and receptor site interactions and some other information that was hopefully going to convince you um, that this mnemonic can be very useful in test situations and in clinical situations. So now we're going to address the mnemonic if you find yourself a little disoriented Outside of any other factors, you may want to go back and look at the first video. So the mnemonic. With a pen and paper, it takes less than 90 seconds to reproduce, which can be very handy in an exam. Or if you're tired and you're on the wards and you don't feel like going down and putting a 10-pound uh, reference book on your lap back in the nurse's office. At first glance, it looks complicated, but it's not. However, it is more tedious to explain in a video how to do than actually doing it. It's almost analogous to like writing instructions on how to tie a shoe versus just showing somebody. Now here's the finished product. Don't panic. Now, we won't stay on this that long. We'll move on. Remember the adage, see one, do one, teach one and maybe this will take a couple practices before you want to teach one but it certainly is easy and let's move forward now let's first orient ourselves to the three rectangles and see what they represent anatomically this is my schematic hypothalamic pituitary diagram boxes now let's look at the pituitary development because it'll help us understand the orientation of these boxes anterior endoderm, posterior neuroectoderm, as you recall from embryology, that's the two primary germ layers that created the pituitary gland. So, looking at this color-coded pituitary and putting it in between our boxes here, it would be the horizontal bottom box that would be the anterior pituitary gland and the vertical rectangle is going to be the posterior plus the infundibular stalk. And the upper rectangle, good guess, it's the hypothalamus. Just want to briefly mention the neurosecretory cells of the posterior pituitary. Um, as you recall the embryology of a second ago, these cells by uh, axonal transport directly deposit the hormones into the posterior pituitary which are oxytocin and ADH or vasopressin and there are many other synonyms for these two chemicals these two molecules um, we're not going to really talk much more about the posterior pituitary today but that's where they sit in our schematic diagram now, we're going to consider six and six here, six hormones in the hypothalamus and six hormones in the anterior pituitary. I will address the technical uh, incongruity of actual six in the bottom, but um, let's move forward. This is, this is helpful as far as we're concerned in most clinical situations and test situations, six and six. Just to remind you, in our diagram, our schematic diagram, where the portal system would reside, be right there along the stalk. We're not going to put it in our diagram. And just to remind us that the hypothalamic hormones that are transported to the anterior pituitary will essentially go through this portal system. So there's six hypothalamic hormones, and I'm going to mention them in a specific order for this mnemonic. Dopamine, 
thyrotropin releasing hormone, somatostatin, growth hormone releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, and corticotropin releasing hormone. Notice this is important that somatostatin and dopamine are the only two inhibitory hormones in this host 12 uh, numbered hormonal set. And it's very important to remember this for the mnemonic. All the above are peptides or polypeptides except dopamine which is a catecholamine. Six hypothalamic hormones focusing now on the red letters. If the hypothalamus was a business enterprise, it might appropriately name itself the following. Now keep in mind that this is a mnemonic within the mnemonic. If you can think of a better one that works for you, that's fine. But um, you need one that will put the order of the uh, hypothalamic hormones in this order. Now here's something to remember about my mnemonic I've chosen is that the hypothalamus plays a key role in the onset of puberty. Now going back to those red letters, do thy sum, growth, gonad, co. I say that the hypothalamus would call itself, if it was a business, the do thy sum, growth, gonad company. And that works for me. Okay, the six anterior pituitary hormones. Prolactin, thyroid stimulating hormone. Don't worry about the order so much now, I'll address that in a minute. Growth hormone follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, ACTH with an asterisk. Now all of these are polypeptides or proteins but I do want to say that they are a little more complex than the proteinaceous structure of the uh, hypothalamic. They're glycoproteins and four out of the six are with alpha and beta subunits so they're a little more elaborate but they're still all proteins. Now with the ACTH Here's where I want to uh, address the technicality of the quote six hormones in the anterior pituitary. We have ACTH, which is actually a cleaved polypeptide from POMC, which is a 200 plus uh, protein, proopiomelanocortin. And quite brilliantly, our creator made it where, depending on how it's cleaved, and it's got like eight different cleavage sites, will produce different. Um, molecules that are um, active in the body. Uh, MSH is one of them, which is one you often hear but related with the anterior pituitary, and beta endorphins, um, and in cephalins and beta lipotropins. There's other ones that come off of these cleavage combinations, and I'm going to acknowledge them because they are important, but um, a lot of textbooks don't even mention uh, the uh, anterior pituitary hormones outside the six although you will see diagrams like this that include them. Now the mnemonic. Step one, put your hypothalamic hormones mnemonic in the upper rectangle. So here we go. Notice I put a comma after growth to remind me to put a vertical line there. The do thy some growth gonad company. Step two, put the corresponding pituitary hormones in the lower rectangle and do it from the right. Now I'm assuming most people know the, the uh, uh, anterior pituitary hormones and can correlate them with, for example, ACTH can be correlated with corticotropin releasing hormone and LH is correlated with gonadotropin releasing hormone and FSH is also corresponding with that. Now the order of these two don't really matter so much in our mnemonic but they need to be there at least in some way. Then draw your horizontal line and growth hormone is obviously related to growth hormone releasing hormone. Somatostatin is not going to be affiliated with anything at this point in our mnemonic. TSH obviously goes with thyrotropin releasing hormone and then we put our prolactin under dopamine. Now these don't have to be perfectly underneath, but they need to be in this order. That's step two. Notice that in the bottom 
the vertical line in the rectangle that separates the rectangular box splits the hormones three and three, and at the top there's four hovering over the th the three in the bottom and two over three. Okay, step three in the mnemonic. We want to put the inhibitory negative sign and stimulatory positive signs between the two rectangles. And what I mean is stick them in this area here. Now this is uh, how we do it. There's three couplets left of the line. We're going to make a line in that middle yellowed area. And there's one couplet and one singlet to the right of that line. Now what do I mean by couplets? I mean we're going to do this. It'll make sense in a second. Now actually these couplets are on the left are called opposite couplets and what do I mean by that? It just means that you're going to a couplet that's opposite is a positive and negative or negative and positive. So it'll make more sense in a second. First thing we do, if this is the most important, is always start left with a negative sign. Then because it's an opposite couplet that obviously means a positive now second what we're going to do is since the first couplet started with the negative the second couplet will start with a positive we're going to flip flop the couplet and then we're going to go back and flip flop it again where we're going to start with the negative and then follow with positive the right side's easy everything's positive okay so when you're done well let's just do this again I put this in here so that we could just see it real quickly again. This is probably the trickiest part. The first part negative in the first couplet. The second couplet starts with a positive and then negative. And then it's a negative and a positive. And then it's positive, positive, positive. That's it. So this is what it'll look like when you put those three couplets on the left of that vertical line and then the one couplet and the singlet to the right of that vertical line. The rest of this mnemonic is very easy. Notice that there is a vertical line all the way down. This helps keep things in order. It's a cue when you're first starting that can be helpful. Okay, now we're drawing back on our knowledge of those two hormones that were inhibitory, dopamine and somatostatin. Notice them and that's one thing we have to notice and the other thing we want to notice before we connect the lines is that the rules are there, there's no connecting lines across. This is really not that hard to get. It's just in no way or fashion do the lines cross anyway. Okay, so now we go and connect the lines. First thing I do is I take my dopamine and somatostatin and connect them appropriately. Dopamine only connects there and somatostatin connects there. There's no crossing of lines. Now the rest of it fills in very logically. Thyrotropin has to fill those two positive signs. Growth hormone can only fill there. It cannot cross that vertical line in the middle. It would violate the rule. Gonadotropin does the couplet. Corticotropin releasing hormone does the singlet. Okay, now the bottom is even easier. Let's just go ahead and put these circles in to emphasize the point. And that is the bottom three hormones, they're going to each take two, the couplet. And that's all they're going to get. So you're going to draw two lines from the couplet for prolactin, two lines from the middle couplet to TSH, two lines to the couplet for growth hormone. And then on the right, each hormone gets one line, one connection. And that is it. Now just sit down and take a look at it and it will all make sense in a few minutes and practice it a few times and I guarantee you can do this in less than uh, most people probably do it less than a minute